We are inside a multi-story bookstore located in one of the busiest areas of Tokyo. Every shelf of these bookcases is packed with manga, specifically comics that target female readers. These readers range from young girls to teenagers and women. The fact that there are manga geared towards every female demographic is a major element of manga culture. Manga focused on themes and stories that interest primarily female readers have a long history that goes back many years. The origins of these manga can be traced back to Japanese magazines geared towards girls that were published in the early 20th century. For almost a hundred years now, we have had magazines targeting preteens, teenagers, and women in their 20s. These magazines provided a foundation for manga geared towards female readers. It started with one-page illustrations accompanying stories and other text-based content published in the magazines. Then, Katsuji Matsumoto and other artists began to submit manga, and these gradually became very popular. The girls and young women of the era were fascinated by the distinctive style of the magazine's artwork. Large eyes have become a common trait of manga with primarily female readers. This practice dates back to a type of illustrator in the early 20th century who specialized in drawing women with doll-like eyes. Later, manga artists incorporated this quality into their own artwork. They also incorporated fashion choices that appealed to their readers, as well as bold panel layouts two elements that began to define these manga. Early works in this genre were created primarily by male artists. But as the years went by, an increasing number of women artists began to make their mark in this field. This is a replica of the Tokiwaso, the legendary apartment building where Osamu Tezuka and other now-famous manga artists lived and worked before making it big. During its heyday in the 1950s, only one female manga artist lived there. She is Hideko Mizuno, who made her commercial debut in 1955 at the age of 15. This was a time when memories of the Second World War were still fresh in the minds of the Japanese. Through her epic stories, Mizuno instilled the girls of the era with hopes and dreams, while also expanding the possibilities of female-focused manga. After the war, there was nothing left. But the books and movies that came in from overseas showed such beautiful, exciting worlds and with such a grand scale. They allowed us to escape our world and lose ourselves in their stories. I was instilled with this overwhelming desire to write stories that were much more dramatic. And of course, all I needed was a sheet of paper and a pen to create any world I could imagine. Nothing gives you that freedom like manga. At a time when women were limited in their choices in life, many female artists turned to manga as a means for expressing themselves. These manga artists refused to adhere to convention and instead drew and wrote the stories they wanted to tell. They brought diversity to female-focused manga and helped it grow into something unique. The 1950s and 60s saw a rapid increase in the number of magazines dedicated to manga targeting girls. The characters featured in these manga became popular and were printed on a variety of children's goods, from shoes to decorated boxes. 
Eventually, these magazines produced manga that earned popularity beyond their target readership of young girls. They began to commission beautiful color illustrations designed to further enhance the appeal of the characters in their manga. In this way, manga geared towards female readers began to be defined not just by their relatable stories, but also by their rich artwork. This is Yu Sugyong, originally from South Korea. She studied at a Japanese university and now researches manga there. She first encountered manga catering to girls as a child in the pages of a South Korean manga magazine. I grew up in the 1990s, and by then, many Japanese manga had already been introduced to South Korea. They included many titles that were also popular in Japan, such as Sailor Moon and Boys Over Flowers. Yu, who studies comics around the world, says there is a reason why Japan's female-focused manga resonate with readers. They are written with girls and women in mind, and often by other women. There are very few other countries that have such a robust culture revolving around those kind of comics. The main characters often have similar backgrounds and lifestyles as yourself, and that makes it very easy to relate to them or fall in love with the manga. And as a result, these manga can sometimes have an enormous impact on you and even change your life. For women, these manga are like a powerful support system. Kayoko Kuramochi, the manga museum curator we saw earlier, goes into more depth on this last point. When young girls see these fictional characters who aren't that much different from them, being optimistic and determined in the face of challenges, it can make these girls wish they could be just like these characters and nudge them towards changing who they are. Compared to Hideko Mizuno, my childhood was obviously nowhere nearly as harsh and repressive. Still, growing up I did experience different kinds of hardship, and at times like those, it was manga that were always there for me, encouraging me. There was one last person we wanted to talk to about this topic. Machiko Satonaka, who debuted in 1964 and went on to become a leading figure in female-focused manga. Satonaka has dabbled in a number of different genres, from contemporary fiction to historical roman acclé. The common thread running through her work is a question she has posed to younger and mature readers alike. What does it mean to live? I've always had a fascination with manga and also a fascination with stories. I was a very determined girl and I decided I was going to be a manga artist. One major factor was that in the world of manga, it didn't seem to matter whether you were a man or a woman, or where you went to school or what your beliefs were. I was absolutely convinced that manga was a fair and just world. So, I thought, I'm going to give it a shot. Satonaka says it was by having a keen sense of the needs of women of all ages that she was able to produce such a diverse body of work. She never compromised on her themes and subject matter and imbued her works with everything she wanted to convey. I was determined to draw exactly what I wanted to draw because whether you're a man or a woman, that's just human nature. You think something through, arrive at an idea you like, and then you act on it. Through my manga, I wanted to convey how I wanted to act on the things that I thought about and the conclusions that I arrived at. Of course, this can limit your readership, and it's nice to have many readers. But wanting to express myself is a core part of who I am, 
and I need to believe that I can express myself through manga. Otherwise, I can't create anything. Fortunately, we saw a rise in manga artists who were also passionate about their ideas, and we helped nurture the diversity and qualities that people like about female-focused manga. And readers themselves embraced what we did, which I think further extended this trend. Many of these readers are, in fact, boys and men. Similarly, manga with more male-focused themes also have many female fans. When a manga artist pours their heart into a work, they often reach a much wider audience than they may have expected. If you look back on the last 20 years or so, you begin to see many more manga featuring female superheroes whose primary strengths are extremely feminine. These artists are not shy about pushing femininity to the forefront in stories that tend to be more male-focused. To me, that feels like a breaking down of gender barriers. I'm really looking forward to the future of manga.